Maps define us. Imaginary lines that delineate neighborhoods. They speak to where we've been and who we are. But these old boundaries only show part of the picture. Here are the new maps of Brooklyn. These are the maps that tell the story of Brooklyn today. And this is what it's like to live on the grid. Hi, I'm Zephyr Teachout, and we are on the grid. Today we are on the hunt for the elusive Brooklyn Republican. It's an overwhelmingly Democratic borough, so the question is, where do Republicans live? Why are they Republican? How are they organizing? And we are going to start with John Mollenkopf, CUNY's director of the Center for Urban Research. Hi there. Hello. How are you doing this morning? Very well, thank you. Wonderful to see you. Nice to be here. Beautiful Brooklyn Park. Oh, it's gorgeous. So here we are in Bay Ridge today, looking for the elusive Brooklyn Republicans. Well, there's about 1.3 million registered voters in Brooklyn, and about 118,000 of them are registered Republicans. Interesting. So less than 10%. I'm trying to think about how that maps onto electoral representation. Well, every district is primarily Democratic yes. in New York, but they do elect Republicans. And that's an interesting paradox yeah. because there are clearly some people who register as Democrats but often vote Republicans. Mm -hmm. For example, the high water mark for Republicans in New York City was Ronald Reagan's first election. He got 40% of the vote in New York City at a time when only about 14% of the voters were registered Republican. And uh, if you think about Mayor Giuliani as a Republican or Mayor Bloomberg as a Republican, they won elections in a heavily Democratic city. And what about Brooklyn? Because that's our topic. So do you, well, see, do you see the same thing with Reagan and Brooklyn Giuliani? Brooklyn leans more, more Democratic than the city as a whole. If you count it as a county and rank all the counties in the United States by the number of Democratic votes that come from them, we're about number three on the national list. Okay after Kings County we're with Seattle, mm -hmm. Washington, and Los Angeles County. So we're in a Democratic stronghold. Okay, let's go, let's go find some Republicans then. Well, you can see they're kind of on the periphery here. Mm -hmm. They're Republicans for somewhat different reasons. The Russians down here are Republicans because they're anti-communist. They fled the Soviet Union. So we're basically talking Brighton Beach. And what kind of numbers do these represent? About roughly 5,000 registered Republicans. And even in okay. these places, they're not the majority of the registered Republicans. Okay. And then what about Republicans um, here in Bay Ridge? I ran a frequency distribution of last names this morning to see what kind of people are Republicans. And you get a lot of good old-fashioned American, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant names like Brown and Davis and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, a bunch of Irish and Italian. Mm -hmm. But you can also see the party is changing here because there are Greek names, there are Lebanese names. What other kinds of political divisions beyond Republican Democrat um, do you sort of see coming out of Brooklyn's map? Before African Americans and Puerto Ricans began to be a significant part of the electorate, the big division was between Catholics and Jews. And to some extent, I think there's a, a bit of that. As, as the white population became a plurality rather than a majority, that brought the Jews and Catholics much closer together. Mm -hmm. And remember, the Republican Party has played an enormous part both in U.S. history and in New York City history. You'll learn a lot about that, I think. Thank you very much for the insights. As That's always, great. wonderful to see you. And see you next time. I'll see you next time. Despite our reputation as a democratic stronghold, a sizable chunk of South Brooklyn is part of a staunchly Republican U.S. congressional district. It's also home to a Republican New York state senator and one other Democratic state senator who crosses party lines to caucus with Republicans. I'm going canvassing with members of the Brooklyn Young Republican Club. I wanna learn about what drives Brooklyn Republicans at the national level and at the local level. Hello. Hey, how are you? Hi. 
I'm Zephyr. Well, you guys know the deal. I'm here to convert you, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> what we're doing today is trying to figure out where Republicans are in Brooklyn, how they're organizing, uh, what the demographics are, you know, what's happening. It's an overwhelmingly Democratic borough. Right. And uh, I'm hoping you can be my guides to some of this. Basically, we're campaigning for Michael Faulkner. He's gonna be the uh, mayoral candidate for 2017. Well, I'm gonna have a bunch of questions along the way, but why don't we get going? Okay, okay sounds great. great. Well, obviously, we're a minority, politically speaking. Right now, our club's focus is to pretty much change that up a little bit. We wanna reach out to different minorities, uh, like blacks, Latinos, women, you know, other people who feel disenfranchised by our organization, our party. I think that a lot of people, especially in New York, they feel like our party, you know, is more concerned about rich, more affluent, you know, white voters, when that's simply not the case. One of the things we wanna know is like, what part of Brooklyn am I most likely to say, oh, there's a, you know, active Republican community? In terms of community, like where's the most, yeah. would be Bay Ridge, where we're at right now, and parts of Marine Park, and also parts of Borough Park. Even though a lot of them might be registered as Democrats, per se, mm. they do vote Republican for presidential. You mm -hmm. can see McCain won that district. Oh, that's interesting. But when I've gone out to get signatures to different various homes yeah. within my community, you'd be surprised that you don't, it's not just white Republicans. Mm -hmm. You have um, African-American Republicans, you have uh, Spanish, you have Indian. Sounds to me like you're looking at two kinds of Republicans. One, those who are registered, and second, those who are registered Democratic but vote Republican. Right, I asked people that question, so why don't you just register as a Republican? Mm -hmm. They said the Republican Party don't have primaries, mm -hmm. and they would like to vote in primaries. Oh, that's interesting. And that's the reason why they, they are registered as Democrat. People like myself and Brandon, our age, millennials, we have seen what has been happening, okay, the last, I'd say, what, seven and a half years or so. Mm -hmm. Nationally, what we're seeing happen right now in our communities is Democrats who control most of everything. It's not so much that people our age necessarily like the Republican Party, but we like the idea of being able to, okay, have the freedom to start our own businesses. Choose to our own schools. So uh, I'm not gonna guess your age. <laughs> But uh, you did mention you're a millennial, so can you just talk a little bit about uh, how you came to the Republican Party or whether you've always been Republican? Sure. Um, I would not say that I was per se a Republican, but I've always been someone who believed in certain values that I think line up with the Republican Party. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is actually my car here. Oh! I've owned this car for the last 10 years. So it somehow survived New York winters and the salt. See, the rust already uh, appeared this year from the uh, New York City salting. Thank you, Mayor de Blasio. This car, if you could see here, I ran for state senate in 2008 against uh, Kevin Parker. I, I would never have guessed you have, what, Brooklyn Young Republican oh, Club? Oh, yeah, yeah. We made that up in 2012. The, the club's been around since 1880. The, uh, the failure of the Republican Party is that we don't get our message out there. Well, be it the fault of we have the media against us, but we have the media right now, right? Well, <laughs> or, speaking of getting you know, your message out there, let's do let's some door-to-door. Let's do door. some door-to-door. Let's get the message out there. Let's go. I have done a lot of door-to-door -door in my life, but I have never done a door-to-door -door with uh, three uh, Republicans. See? So. First time for everything, right? Yes. <laughs> Hey, how you doing today? Just wanted to hand this out to you. I'm uh, working with Michael Faulkner, and he's looking at running for mayor in 2017. Definitely wants to bring jobs into the area. He wants to unite the city. Oh, hi, ma'am, how are you? Uh, my name's Raymond Renoletta. I'm uh, just going around and handing these out to people. My name is Raymond, and I'm with the Brooklyn Young Republican Club. And this gentleman is going to be running for mayor in 2017. He wants to take the city and unite it once again. For me, I'm a Catholic. I care about those that are most in need. That is what my faith teaches me. You 
a Christian as Christian, well, and that's what his faith teaches you. Absolutely. And this is why we got to go out here and we got to do things like this. When you're at the doors, I mean, we just saw you talking to a few, a few different folks. What kinds of things come up? I personally try to stay away from social issues because I think that's very, very personal, mm -hmm. especially when you're dealing with same-sex marriage. And, uh, you know, I know that's a very hot-button topic and women's you rights. Do you hear that a lot at the doors? Yes, we okay. do. Uh, what we try to focus on more is economic issues, investing in small businesses, job opportunities. But at the end of the day, I think that with general people like you, myself, Ray, and Glenn, what we really care about is um, jobs. You're gonna be running for mayor in 2017. Thank you guys for letting me watch a canvas, oh, letting me peer into your soul and your car. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being open minded and, and thank you. Us. Yes, thank you. I think I can take canvassing for a Republican mayoral candidate off the list of things I haven't done. Now I'm headed to Sheepshead Bay to meet with a member of the Brooklyn GOP and two members of the Brooklyn Young Republicans. Not to be confused with the Brooklyn Young Republican Club I just met with. It's a long story. I, I really want to learn more about what life is like for a Republican in Brooklyn. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. How are you? <laughs> good. Hey. I'm, I'm Zephyr Tisha. Jean, good to meet you. So nice to meet you. Great to see you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Vito. Zephyr, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Yes. And I'm Vito. All right. <laughs> and I'm still Zephyr. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, where are we? I don't think... Uh, we are at Wheeler's Bar and Restaurant here in beautiful Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. I gotta say, Sheepshead Bay is gorgeous. Oh, it's absolutely great. Have you been to the waterfront yet? It's amazing. I, I have, and I also just love the sort of... Uh, unbelievable small business community you see here. It's, it's a tradition around here that this has been around for since day one. I am actually a fourth generation resident of Sheepshead Bay. Yes, and a uh, staunch member of Republican Brooklyn. One of the few in the proud. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> well, let's go inside. I'd love to uh, learn a little bit more about the organizing you're doing and uh, Republicans in Brooklyn. Sounds like fun. Let me get the door. Thank you so much. There you go. Cheers. All right. We have come to uh, Sheepshead Bay in search of the unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> the Brooklyn Republican. And uh, he's got three unicorns at this table. Yeah, and in fact, at the, like, there's probably a meeting somewhere that doesn't have quorum because we're all here. <laughs> <laughs> More seriously, we do know there are Republicans in Brooklyn. Tell me a little bit about your club and uh, where you see the Republican organizing, just to get a sense of the institutional structure. Republicans outnumbered about eight to one in New York City. In Brooklyn, I'm the vice president of the Brooklyn Young Republicans. So uh, we see different small organizations uh, popping up in Brooklyn that, you know, it's um, safe haven for Republicans. The club started back in 2011, and it came from a desire to get more Republicans actively involved in campaigning. The Brooklyn Young Republicans, yes. which you can follow at B-K-L-Y-N-Y-R-S, okay, on Twitter, they're great. And that's the club that we're a part of, and that it has a Twitter presence. But there's also a lot of presence on the blogs as well, because there is no sort of newspaper that everyone could go to, like Daily News or something, right. that a lot of people are gonna read in, in so, Brooklyn. Uh, we do get to travel a whole lot and meet a lot of Republicans. And when you do that, and you say you're from Brooklyn, and you say that you're Republican, they're like, Wow, what's that like? Mm -hmm. Because we can't imagine being in an area so dominated by the other side. I mean, we're talking to people from like Nebraska and Texas and all these places where they're like, it's normal to be conservative and to be outwardly conservative in your everyday life. Just give me a little bit of a portrait of who are the active organizers in the club. You have people from all different types of Republican Party you know, platforms, meaning you have conservatives, Christian conservatives, you have Tea Party conservatives like myself, libertarians I would consider myself. You'd be surprised, there is a lot of different Republicans that make up the Brooklyn Republican Party. I think the biggest overriding philosophy is, first of all, when you're in what we like to call the People's Republic of New York City, you want to have a two-party system and you want to be that opposition voice to the status quo of what's going on in politics in New York City. We all think that government's just gotten too big and too intrusive. 
And what about sort of backgrounds? Where are people coming from? Again, with a, so, you know, some broad generalizations about who you see, especially in this community, because we were just in uh, Bay Ridge. And it's hard to pigeonhole a demographic because our, the club president for the Brooklyn Young Republicans is a Latina female. But it is traditionally more Italian. I do see that amongst the leadership. And the, the larger clubs in Southern Brooklyn are definitely tend to be either Russian mm -hmm. or predominantly older generation Italian. If you're trying to paint a portrait of uh, Brooklyn Republicans, both the organization and, and voters, what are things that you think might be surprising or interesting about uh, Republicans in Brooklyn that people wouldn't, wouldn't know? And I might not know to ask. First thing is, a Brooklyn Republican voter is different voting for a federal election than they are for a state election. Okay. Or even a city election. Mm -hmm. I think that when it comes to federal issues, you will find a lot of Reagan Democrats still around that will cross party lines to vote for a Republican on a federal level. So you'd see people who would say, identify as a Republican and vote Democrat locally, and then the reverse. Absolutely. Identify as Democratic, but vote Republican nationally? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think when you go to Brighton Beach, it's a perfect example of that mm -hmm. because you have a first-generation Russian-American community that is so big on Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. And they remember the late 80s and early 90s. And they want that strong Republican in the Oval Office. Mm -hmm. But then they're worried about their social welfare programs to make sure that food stamps are still there for them. Mm -hmm. They want to make sure that if they had get housing assistance, it's still there for them. So who are they going to vote for? They're going to vote for the people that are in the majority in the city, and they'll vote for the Democrat, typically That's the That's fascinating. That's really fascinating. You were going to say something, Vito? I remember, because um, the congressional districts, assembly districts, they all cross over. Yeah. So the congressional district near us, New York 11, uh, you see that go more tend to be Republican at the federal level, but then city council race, mm -hmm. you see go heavily Democratic. You know, how it's interesting how they're basically the same district, but yeah. different levels go, you know, they sway differently. I clearly noticed that as well. That actually leads into a question I have about areas where we might be able to agree. Okay, I'm a little scared, but let's see. <laughs> you guys are in college, familiar with this idea of um, a drinking game? No. No? No. Okay. I only go to college to study. Okay, good. If there is something that I propose that you agree with, we'll make a toast. And if there's something you propose that I agree with, you know, I'll make a toast right back at you. Does that work? Sounds right. good to me. Okay. Uh, why don't we start with uh, Vito? No, think. <laughs> Let's go with less gun control on national level. Yes. Well, you got three of you drinking. <laughs> I'll toast you. <laughs> uh, now, okay. <laughs> explain yourself, young man. As a strict constitutionalist, the Second Amendment says that your right to bear arms shall not be infringed. Yeah, right, so I, no, I take your point, and, and uh, there's a bunch of reasons I couldn't toast. Having said that, I have some real concerns about Andrew Cuomo's SAFE Act. We've heard that you disagree with Andrew Cuomo a little bit. He's so. a great <laughs> um, But having said that, this, so, I, so I can't answer on that broad level, so maybe we can find some things that are more specific. I don't know, I hear I got one. We should break up the big banks. I'm gonna half toast to that one, because there has to be a balancing point between regulation and and what we have now. I think we have over-regulation now, and I think that banks that are too big should be allowed to fail and not bail them out the way they did. So if you're talking about big, bringing up the big banks because the market determines that it should be gone, yeah, I'm with that. Okay, well, let's, let's see your half toast. All right, here you go. Okay, you go. I, got a, I got a half toast. What do you, now, you disagree with me, right? I think there should be no regulations. I'm a laissez-faire capitalist. I read Ayn Rand. I refer you to capitalism, the unknown ideal, for more information. <laughs> but You're plugging someone else's book right now. <laughs> okay, but, but, but only because I feel in a true free market system that these big banks wouldn't even exist. And if they did, it's only because the people consented to such. Aren't you concerned that some of the big banks have ceased to be economic actors and have started to become political actors? They are effectively governing and regulating us collectively and no longer acting as competitive players. Because we have big business, and I think you would agree with me on this, big business and big corporations and banks in bed with one another. And I got one for you then. Uh, more prosecutions of uh, the criminals from the financial crisis? I think criminality should be prosecuted. Let's just put it at that. All right, criminal, that's good. Follow the law, and that'll go with There you go. I'll, okay. I think we can all agree there on that. There you go. But okay, I, now your turn, Vita. Ending the war on drugs and stop putting kids in jail for walking around with little bags of pot. 
All right. All right. <laughs> we got one. <laughs> I'm gonna hang out on that one. <laughs> My whole thing is the drug trade would be wiped out tomorrow if we make it legal product on the free market because there wouldn't be no need for these underground activities. Your turn. Okay, so I believe that uh, police departments across this nation are becoming over-militarized. Sure. <laughs> now, now, now let's take it the next step and say what the policy that relates to that is. Well, I think it's twofold. Federal government has a surplus of all these vehicles from all these wars oh, that we I'm fought. so with you on this. Why does a police department from rural Alabama, why do they need a tank? And I think what it leads to is what we see many people complain about with the police now, and that is two heavy-handed tactics, and it just kind of trickles down. Here's one I think we could agree on. Government shouldn't be dictating marriage terms. They should get out of the business altogether and let individuals contract freely. Gay, straight, whatever. Leave them alone, it's their own lives. Yes. <laughs> All right, and a lot of pressure on you, Vito. <laughs> That this was a whole lot of fun. I can drink oh, that. All right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Jean briefly mentioned the unique voting patterns within the Russian Republican community, and I'm curious to learn more. I'm on my way to Tatiana's restaurant in Brighton Beach to speak with a leader from that community. Hi, it's Boris so nice Pink. to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, Boris Pinkus. Zephyr teach out. Well, I couldn't be any better. Look at this. Oh, wonderful. I mean, this it's is amazing. so beautiful. It's beautiful. Go ahead. So I've heard that uh, you're never supposed to talk about politics with strangers, but we're going to do that. Let's just soften it up by talking about food first. So Absolutely. we're at a, we're at a very famous happy. restaurant. One of the most popular, the famous restaurant. The most popular food in Russian menu are, uh, is made from potato, herring, and of course, vodka. I'm so sorry, but we're going to have to do with wine today. <laughs> More than happy. Okay. Zazdarovia. Zazdarovia. <laughs> You don't the, mind if I eat while I listen? Absolutely, yeah, we eat okay. and talk. I represent Russian Jewish community. Mm -hmm. Most of Russian Jewish people came to United States right after the Soviet Union collapsed. Mm -hmm. It was 1991. Now we are over 300,000 Russian Jews living just in South Brooklyn. Total Russian-speaking immigrants mm -hmm. residing in our New York City are 700,000. When the Soviet Union collapsed, of course, many, many Russian Jews got opportunity to choose their countries. Mm -hmm. Most of them moved to Israel. Some of to the United States, like I did. So the reason why I have chosen the United States, even not Israel, I will tell you, even though my parents live in Israel, I have chosen this country because I believe that the United States is the only the leader in democratic world which can help Israel better than any other countries in the world. Mm -hmm. And my help could be focused on Israel only if I be become American citizen. And is the most important thing for you then, personally, yes. in deciding your own support for a candidate, um, their uh, policy positions related to Israel? Absolutely. I have so many questions. One yes. is, would you say that uh, for many, many active Russian Jews in this area, yeah. the key issue is the relationship to Israel. One of them. More important than, say, domestic policy around education. But many issues, to be honest. Okay. We talk about foreign issues. Mm -hmm. At the same time, don't forget, we are from the former Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. It's very painful to see what's happened in Ukraine, mm -hmm. what's happened in Russia. Due to Ronald Reagan, Soviet Union collapse, to be honest with you. Oh, wonderful. We have, we have to recognize this, you know. So what you're eating now is borscht. It is so... The most popular soup in Russia. You will love it. I love it's borscht, ingredients. and this is one of the best borscht Absolutely. I've had. It is it. so flavorful. You were talking about the hundreds of thousands of Russian immigrants uh, yes. and Russian-speaking families here in yeah. Brooklyn. A tiny minority are, are Republican, right? I will tell you, on election days, of course, most of Democrats vote for Republicans. Here in this area? Yes, Why? exactly. Issue number one is uh, the how we defend our values outside of our country. Second, in issue taxes. We totally against the raising taxes. We know if we're raising taxes, we are more depend on government. We came from the country where government, the oven of our mm -hmm. life. 
this is very, very painful for us. We're trying to resist, to resist those who are for increasing taxes. This is the issue which is divided us, Republicans and Democrats. And do you work sometimes with uh, Democratic Russian clubs on some issues? Yes, absolutely. Mm. On international issues is no doubt. We have no any differences, no any gaps between us, okay? On social issues, certain, we have a lot of kids who are engaging in drug addictions, for instance. Therefore, we are created a team now, which includes elected officials and activists of our community, physicians, and we're trying to help their parents to take care of their kids. So your political club does politics, but also other kinds of community Absolutely. work. Absolutely. Well, thank you for opening your uh, uh, community and your passion, which you uh, share so eloquently. See, I'm so proud of you because you paid attention to our Russian community on Republican sides. I'm so proud of you and I will be more than happy to be in touch with you in the future. I look forward to that. Thank you very much. Thinking about Brooklyn politics, I can't help but seeing the continuing connection between ethnicity and party preference. You have Russian Jews and their concern for Israel, as we just heard. And then there's this much older affiliation between Italian immigrants and the GOP, who, well, some people think it's because the Irish dominated the local Democratic Party a century or more ago, found a home in the Republican Party. It's history, but it's very much alive today.